Before I catch up on Travis, let me conclude some good ways that might cause you to lose track. So number one common mistake is here, the working distance. So as you can see now, I am at a very good distance. It tells you excellent and good. The indicator bar is green. So let's see if we move too close to it, the indicator bar will turn to orange and soon everything will be gone. So does the point cloud preview page. So what you need to do is just like me, move back a little bit to maintain a good, dist good distance. And what happens if you move too far away, the point cloud will be gone and the bar turns orange to red and then nothing. So number one important thing to do is maintain a good distance. So let me show you an example here. So let's scan at a good distance here. And note that if you are moving a little bit too close, it's not the end of the world. So what you need to do is you adjust the distance real time so you can continue the scanning. And same thing, if you're a little bit too far away, but if you are continue going wrong too far away, look, what will happen is too few point clouds captured. So what you need to do is you can pause your scan go back the several steps and continue the scanning or just delete this current scan and start a new one. So another common mistake is abrupt movement. So just like, for example, you are taking a video for a person from head to toe or you panning in the room, you always do it like this, right? Smoothly and steady. You don't do like, that will be too fast. You can't really film anything. And same way it goes for the scanner. For example, let me show you how to scan this dummy from head to toe. You do you start from the head, maintain a good distance, and you move slowly and steady down, down, and down. So I'm not gonna show you uh, to scan the other side because I have to walk around. So anyway, that's the way you scan a, a big item while moving your scanner. Let me show you what happens if you're moving too fast. For example, here, starting from the head again and whew, see, it'll cause tracking loss. That's because the scanner cannot ca catch up to your speed. So you can never go from scanning the head directly to scanning the toe. Your, your movement need to be steady, slowly and continuously. You scan something that continue with each other, the areas, okay? And another thing is you can, you can tilt your scanner while scanning some area like this. For example, if I want to scan something underneath the, the jaw and the neck area, I can do it slowly. But if I look, if I do it too fast, what will happen is, see, it will also lose track because you're moving too fast and the camera might go to capture something else. Okay, another thing that might affect your scan is exposure setting. For example, let me, let's talk about the depth camera exposure first, which is on the left corner of your scanner screen. Uh, by default it's on automatic, which means the scanner will adjust itself for you, but you can also fix it at a certain level. For example, now we are at minimum one. And at the preview page, as you can see, the line is a little bit blue and blue means you are underexposed. You need to increase it. But let's see if we increase it too much into eight maximum. Uh, as you can see now, it's a lot of red and red means you are overexposed. You need to decrease the level. But let's see if we scan it in this way, what will happen? As you can see, it's very easy to lose track and even you succeed there will be a lot of holes in your scan. So definitely not a good idea to do so in the wrong exposure setting. Okay, now let's scan uh, this line in a correct setting, which probably be two or one, or that we can set it as auto to let the scanner decide for us. So as you can see, now the line has a little bit blue and a little bit red at the same time. And note that a little bit blue and red is okay. Okay, let's do it. And know that when you are on auto, it's better to move the scanner slowly because 
the scanner will need about half seconds to adjust the exposure level for you. Okay, I'm not gonna do a perfect scan because I think this is already good enough. Let's look at the point clouds. It's already very complete and very good, no error. Another thing that might affect your exposure setting is the color of your object. As you can see, I have a white line and a black con. So white color, naturally, it has the highest reflection rate of light, which means you need to keep the exposure level down. Don't do it too much. On the contrary, black color naturally absorbs light, so which means you need to keep the exposure level up. For example, here, uh, let's put it on the... Uh, you know what, this small turntable might be not enough space for you to put something big on it, but don't worry. Here, this is a small collaboration board It comes with your packaging. You can use it not only for collaboration, but also, look, you can put it on the small turntable so that you can put something bigger on it. Smart, huh? Okay, so now, as you can see, I am at a maximum level of eight, but still the cone is a lot of blue on it and the point cloud is preview is not very complete. So one way to fill, fix this is you can choose object type, dark. And let's turn it up to eight. So now, as you can see, now it still has some blue, but it's acceptable because at the preview page, now my cone is almost complete. So now let's scan this cone. Okay, again, I'm not gonna do a, com a very perfect scan. Let's just look at the details of the point clouds. It's already good enough for me. Very complete and no error happens. What if you have something that has both black and white color? For example, like this panda. I mean, you can now you cannot just fix the exposure level at better for white or better for black, right? So in this case, it's better to uh, choose the object type in general and choose auto as the exposure level so that the scanner will adjust for you in real time. Okay, now let's move down. Okay, I'm not gonna do a perfect scan, just letting you see the point cloud. Okay, as you can see, the Panda actually works fine, it does not have a lot of problem. That's mainly because the surface of the Panda is very matte, just like this con. But as you can see in the point cloud, the eye area, you can't barely see anything in the eye area. That's because this eye is making things worse. It's not only black, but it's also reflective and transparent because it's made of glass or, or plastic, I don't know. So in this case, let me show you another example right here. This black lion, or white lion's brother. So this lion's surface is also very smooth, shiny, which is reflective of color. So in this case, the scanner might just cannot capture the surface because of the material. Let me show you. Okay, let's fix it at eight and let's choose dark. So as you can see, even under eight exposure and under dark object type, still on the preview page, it's very hard for the scanner to capture everything of it. And what will, it will highly possibly cause losing track. Let's see. Oops, oops, no, 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 no. Okay, tracking lost. So in this case, you need to change the surface of the object, which is either too dark, too reflective, or too shiny, and also transparent, like glass. Also, you need to apply some scan spray on the surface.